I did African Gothic, the play, in Los Angeles in 2005. Um, that's when I found out about Raisin De Vint. Even though I was born in South Africa, I left when I was a young boy, so I had no idea who she was. And um, the first thing that struck me about doing the play is how the audience was always off balance. They would laugh, they would gasp. You never knew what was coming next, and I think that's the genius of her work. One of the most important things that Gabriel and myself were looking for was to keep the film authentic. The nuances and the accent, and we, we must go with South African actors for the family. And we did, and it paid off. What I love about Grace's work is that she's not on the head. She's telling a story that you're really on the edge of your seat, wondering what's going to happen next. Yet, there's a hidden message behind everything. Um, and that fascinates me, because we live in a world now where uh, everything is literal. And to know that Reza was writing these plays at the height of censorship uh, in South Africa, and she was getting wonderful reviews, yet at the same time was trying to battle the system by her use of symbols. I grew up in the 60s in Chicago, uh, and my parents uh, grew up at a time when there were no voting rights for black people, and people were getting hung for just looking at white women, and you know. So I don't, my own frame of reference is that, and uh, growing up a black kid in, in 1960s Chicago, um, I'll never, I, my birthday, my 30th birthday, I'll never forget that uh, Nelson Mandela was freed from prison after 27 years. And um, uh, nine days before that uh, was the end of apartheid. So having never been to South Africa, um, I just can't imagine, I've never had to live through anything like that. So you know, I had to do a lot of reading. Um, and I read Reza DeWitt's uh, original uh, book that uh, African Gothic is based on. Um, I wish that she had, I wish I'd been able to meet her, um, and um, I hope that she would be happy with the work that um, we all did, um, the wonderful folks of African Gothic. Uh, she pointed out things that did not want to be addressed or society did not want to see. As a political figure or as a social commentary person, I mean, she was, you know, she was right there. Um, but that's just one aspect of it. The other thing that blew me away about Riza is that she was never afraid to um, take on any of the masters. Uh, she was never afraid to do any production, be it uh, Churchill or Chekhov or any of these sacred, you know, literary works that people are supposed to, you know, do verbatim. Uh, she would change them. She would translate them. She would change the context. Um, and she would write prequels and sequels to them in different languages or the same language. Uh, it should show anybody how much not only she understood and appreciated those classical literary works, but how much of a genius she was that she could actually make those kind of adaptions. Uh, she lived and breathed this kind of stuff. Uh, and her passion showed uh, whether she was directing you in a play or she was teaching you in a writing class. Um, and that's what made her so phenomenal. Uh, there was one time when I was... Uh, I was writing a paper, about 400 kids writing a three-hour exam, and Riza DeVette walked in, and she walked right up to my desk, and I had submitted a, a play or a portion of a play that I hadn't completed yet. I uh, hadn't done a great job, uh, didn't know how to finish it, so I just kind of threw it in there. Um, and she walked into my desk, and in the middle of this hallway, in complete silence, she looked at me, she threw it on my desk, and she said, finish it. Um, and that was Riza. You know, she was direct, passionate, um, just a, a literary figure we will really struggle to replace. I was born in Cape Town in the 70s. I grew up during 
a time of a lot of up upheaval and um, during the uprisings, really. And uh, the kind of theater that I, was, I went to see as, as a child was political theater, a lot of protest theater, because at that time, South African storytelling was very much um, driven by what was going on socially and politically. Um, so I remember going to the Market Theater in Johannesburg. Um, but my, my English teacher at the time would take me to see these beautiful plays, and then we'd go back and have to write um, you know, stories about our impressions of it. And we were really encouraged at that school that I went to to really think and be critical of what was going on around us, um, which I'm grateful for. And actually, that's when I first sort of knew that I was an actress. Amen. Amen. I see you're still faithful to the traditions of your forefathers. Yeah, we do everything they did. But not the Shambok. The Shambok? Yeah, the Shambok. We don't use it anymore, it hangs on the wall. When you see it in, in context of the, the time in which it was written, um, I feel inspired by, it, by the very fact that a female playwright wrote the story right at a time when so much was being suppressed and so much wasn't being spoken about. I think it was such a daring, courageous piece um, to kind of uh, really say so much through, these, through this, the world of this family um, that, that, that uh, what was going on socially was really affecting family life and people's relationships and through the repression of, of, of so much, there was so much that was rotting within. How do you with my kids? Look for me, Alina. Alina, look for me. To me, it's more of a story about people and about relationships and about different kinds of love. I think every relationship within the story, the play and the film, can be um, looked at through the prism of love. Um, Froki and Sissy have a certain kind of love. The father and daughter have another kind, the mother and son have another kind, um, the lawyer and his wife have yet another kind. Who's that? That's my wife. That was taken on our honeymoon in Durban. My wife is from Durban. There's a yet another kind between Alina and everyone. Um, it's just... It asks the question of what kinds of love are acceptable and what are not. I buy a fun Hollywood in Los Angeles in America, yeah, but it must say Africa and it can say Afrikaans. Nee.